now. Hi, I'm Jana. I'm an adult human person and a professional fantasy illustrator. My seasonal musings are for bragging about all the art that I've created throughout the season and for the fun things I've learned on the way as a creative human carving out a little life for myself. First up, the season is winter and my first learning as a human being is simply to acknowledge everything that comes with it being winter. It's cold, it's dark, my body just wants to preserve energy, just sleeping, just eating carbs and I have to accept that and that's, that's absolutely okay. However, my top learning as an artist is all about community. If you want to make a living as an illustrator, you need your artist friends around you. You need people you can ask questions about the business. You need people you can ask for feedback. You need people you can vent your woes to and they will understand because they know the struggle. You need people who can give you insights on what rates to expect in certain markets or from certain clients. We might not have a union, but we still have each other. This year I have been organizing a little networking trip to the US that I have essentially been fantasizing about since the very start of my career. And it really made it sink in how absolutely precious and valuable my community is and how grateful I am for all the people in it. See, I have never flown overseas and the idea of flying to the US on my own was just hugely overwhelming to me. I'm a bit of a solitary person. Most days it's just me and my desk. So I'm very used to doing things on my own and it doesn't come natural to me to ask other people for help. There's a wall in my brain where I just don't realize that's even an option. But I'm working on, on tearing that one down. I'm working on getting better at asking other people for help and my first instinct being, oh, there is a person I can reach out to instead of being, oh no, how am I gonna do this alone, right? And I am getting better at that. And so I did reach out to a fellow illustrator, a friend who's also living in Germany, and I asked whether maybe she wanted to team up and she said yes. The next thing I know, a US friend of mine is offering a place to stay and a road trip to our shared destination. And when it came to reaching out to industry contacts, most of the people I reached out to were just as excited about meeting up in person as I was. So this, this entire trip essentially just organized itself because there is just so much help and people are are just so willing to, to reach a hand and support me and are just so excited. I, I used to be so scared of this and now I am just really, really excited and I think it's going to be the best trip. So, oh, I've, I've never really thought of myself as like a, a social spider sitting in my densely woven net of, of just contacts that I can reach everywhere. Uh, but I mean, I, I've been in the industry, in the industry uh, for nearly 10 years now. So even I have, have managed to build my little web. <sighs> and I can't quite believe it sometimes, you know, and it really, that, that really sank in. Yeah, during the last few months, I was like, wow, this is like magic. <laughs> now, if you're a shy to socially anxious, major introverted person like me, you know, more of a lurker than a commenter, then here are a few ideas how you can go about making those precious, sweet artist friends. Step one, and this is, this is a research task, Find your people. Who is interested in 
and creating the same kind of art than you like? Who seems to be at a similar stage in their career? Who do you share an aesthetic with? Who has the same goals and dreams? Who feels like a kindred spirit? These are the people you want to be friends with. So step number two, talk to them. And I do include the liking and the commenting and the sharing with that. These are just really easy ways to support fellow artists and to show them that you like their work. And if you do it quite a lot, they will notice. You know, some names just pop up over and over again and they will be like, oh, this person really seems to like my work. And you know, we people, you generally like it if other people like us. So they'll already think very fondly of you in a way. So if you then at some point want to reach out via email or direct message, they will already have a little connection to you. I'm not sure whether I actually have ever done that, but it has certainly been done to me. And uh, yeah, one of these people, I, I count among my best friends nowadays. You never know unless you try. Whenever you reach out like that, uh, keep in mind that at this point you're essentially strangers. So always be polite, you know, treat them with respect. Think about what you would like if you were being approached by a potential new friend or a colleague. It's not a foolproof method, but generally just try to try to imagine you're them, right? Put yourself in their shoes and you should be fine. Step number three, find out why your tribe hangs out. What are the Discord servers, the Facebook groups, the um, forums to know? Again, this is a great thing you can ask other artists. If you cannot find a group to your liking, maybe start your own. Whether that is just an intimate, cozy group chat or you go all out on a full-blown artist collective. Don't feel afraid to ask other artists to join forces. The worst they can do is say no. And if you have chosen your victims well, they might actually be just in need of community and support as you are. Maybe they'll actually be quite grateful if you reach out to them because that's a brave thing to do and most people won't. Here are some other ways for you to find places online to hang out and people to hang out with. Now, if you have the money, you might want to participate in mentorship programs or online courses because they usually come with a Discord server or a Facebook group attached, right? It's usually for organizational purposes, for sharing homework and all this stuff. And sometimes they stay open after the course ends or you can organize a new group uh, for some people who have taken the same course. You know, like if you want to start a little critique group, for example. And the great thing about educational, educational programs is that you already know that the people who are in there share your interests and are likely at a similar stage in their career. In any ways, they want to learn something and they want to grow. And that is, that is amazing, an amazing starting point. And you've already kind of gotten to know each other during the program. So definitely I'd recommend that. I mean, some courses are quite expensive, so it might not be for everyone, but if you can make it happen, you don't just get the course. You cannot, I mean, you can have a great teacher and a great course and you get, friends. So that's pretty sweet. You also want to keep your eyes open for projects, particularly artist initiated projects that involve lots of artists like for example zines or tarot decks. They usually come with their own Discord servers, they involve lots of artists, they're all interested in similar subject matters, you have the same passions if it's like a fanzine. Uh, so, so they are great places to connect. They're my community projects and I'm trying to participate in 
one a year. But some projects involving lots of artists definitely are for profit and are more of a, more of a sta standard client's um, situation. And if that's the case, definitely make sure you're a paid fair. You're, you're paid fairly. Step four, once you are in the group, in the community, be helpful and empathetic. Be a person you yourself would want to be friends with. Now personally I'm quite bad at keeping up with chats and forums so I'll just chime in once every blue moon. But there are other ways to contribute. For example, when I still had the time, I used to help run the Changeling Artist Collective's Tumblr account. I also organized and hosted live streams for the collective. You can actually still find them here on this channel. I didn't know what I was doing, but I offered anyways. You know, just find something that works for you, find something you want to try and uh, run with it. You don't need to do everything perfectly. These are just kind of elements that, that accumulate over time. You know, comment here, I like there, uh, then you participate in a project, you help out with organizing something, and at some point they'll just become familiar with your face or your profile pic anyways, with your name, and that's all you want. Step five real live rules nothing beats in person interaction even if it's awkward i'm a bit geographically challenged with most of the fantasy art community residing on a different continent but you can bet that as soon as i get a whiff of a fellow artist considering, you know, just considering a trip to Berlin, I will shoot them a message. And similarly, if I know I will be traveling to another artist's hometown, or at least I'll, that I'll be close enough that I could easily take a detour there, I will let them know. And if you are in one of these mutual we've been liking each other's art on Instagram for years relationships, chances are that they'll actually be really excited to meet you too. Lastly, don't neglect your local community. Find out if there are any artist meetups or drink and draws around where you live. Online communities are great, but nothing beats talking shop over coffee and some delicious cake. I've created 23 illustrations since the start of this year. It sounds like a lot. Is it a lot? I can't really show you any of them because they're as of yet unpublished client work, but two of them are actually personal art. The dried piece I teased in my February vlog and the other piece is the one you've seen me working on throughout this video. It's called Somebody I Know and it captured a moment from last year when I was visiting a small concert in an old water tower. The location was magical and, um, well, spooky. I couldn't shake the feeling I knew somebody in the crowd and although it was extremely unlikely for the person to be there, it was not impossible. But the light, or, or let's face it, my eyesight, was too bad to clearly make them out. And I'm a socially awkward coward, so of course I didn't actually approach them. Maybe I even preferred not knowing to keep the mystery alive. I really wanted to recreate the same hazy atmosphere and uncertainty of the moment, and I'm pretty happy with how it eventually turned out even if there were way less glowing eyes involved in real life.